I didn't discover adoption, my adoption, until I was 55. So it's only been 20 years and it's been a life-changing experience. Uh, adoption has meant closing one particular section of my life, closing the door gently, but still remembering, still loyal to that life, but opening up a whole new experience, a whole new book. You may not know you're adopted. You may not have been told you're adopted, but you know you do. Subconsciously, you know there are signs all throughout your life. I had all these feelings that the family was different, I was different to them, they were very conservative, very low key, I was just the opposite. And it took them quite a while to sort of keep me contained. And I kept asking questions and then I stopped asking questions because I felt that they weren't giving me the answers I needed and perhaps I was hurting them. And the only reason I found out that I was adopted was the fact that I was living in Switzerland. I got married in Switzerland and my adoptive parents were invited across for the wedding. Uh, to get married in Switzerland, I needed a full birth certificate. I sent a letter to my adoptive father in Sydney and said, look, you, you need to sort this out. There's been an error made on the birth certificate. He handed me papers. And the only thing I remember seeing on those papers is the word adoption. I thought, I must investigate, because if I don't go down that path and just find out exactly if I, if I were right or not, then I'll always wonder. So um, I received a letter from the family services, and they, in the letter there was a page, and it was divided into columns. This might have been the secret. I was shocked, I was hysterical, and I remember nothing more of that day by the fact that that word adoption was on those papers. And here I was, a week away from getting married, to find out that the last 28 years of my life had been a lie. Everyone knew I was adopted, everyone. And there was mum and dad's name. Still a shock, yeah. still a shock. Um, and to think that I was 55, and I thought, why did they keep it a secret? And even more so, why did all the family, when I told them, they said, we all knew. And then when they found out that I'd found out suddenly that I was adopted, then everyone had the opinion, well, hey, Greg, you had a great life. They love you so much. Don't worry about it. Get on with your life, you know? Don't worry about it, it's all good. And it's like, well, no, no, it's, no, it's not all good. You know? And like, no one could actually understand the trauma suffered by me, you know, in that moment where you find out you're adopted. Now that I'd found, that I discovered the secret, discovered that I was adopted, was I running out of time? Was I going to miss the last bus? Was Mum still alive? I had to then look into actually who I was. So I wrote a letter, absolute acceptance. And so I was on my way to a recovery from the anxiety and the years and years of wondering and not being sure of who I was, not being sure of where I stood with the family, a lot of uncertainty, and it was put right. I was so pleased that I found out at last because I might have died not knowing. And this wonderful family that embraced me and said, when are you coming over? And my cousins and my sister, the door was open. If mum had rejected me, that would have been that would have caused me to have uh, a lot of mental health implications. I would have been devastated. So the impact on my life of adoption, you know, it started before I even knew I was adopted. I started to understand 
my mental health use, issues throughout my life, the triggers, um, and how it had affected my family. So from just the way I interact you know, with my wife, with my boys, you know, with friends. So trust issues, you know, I, I suddenly realise why I don't trust people. You know, in, in the years gone by, since I've been in therapy, you know, I look in the mirror and not recognise the person that's looking back at me in the mirror. It seems surreal. If I look at my life, I look at, you know, photos of my adoptive family and feel like I don't belong there. You know, there's no physical characteristics that link me to them. I know that now, I know it, it's proven. But then I look at my biological family, the family I have found. My mother died before I knew who she was. I found my birth father. Yeah, okay, so he remarried. I know them but it's obvious I'm not part of the family. I never can be, I didn't grow up with them. So now I'm sat here and I have two families, but really I have none. I have none that I can feel like I can call them my family. I can say I'm related to them. You know, on paper, I can say I'm related to my adoptive family, but I don't feel related to them. Every baby comes into this world uh, with their own little personality, their own blueprint, as I said before. Uh, and they grow up and these, these feelings, this, these genes, they, they can't be erased completely. They still come through. And it's like nature and nurture. The, the two can combine but there's always nature. There's always the genetic makeup, and that can't be eroded or eradicated. It can't be. It's strong. It, it was a relief when I knew that I'd been right all along. So I, I don't think they actually fully will realise until probably years later how big it was, how big a uh, discovery it was for me. But I just felt, yes, if they'd have just told me, they wouldn't have lost me, so it was a regret. So, you know, the impact, it'll, I'll take it to my grave. You know. But the only thing that's really helped me in all my life is the last sort of six to eight months of having found Park and the support group that I've joined is meeting people that have an appreciation for what I've gone through, for what my life experience is, that don't look at me and think that I'm a bit crazy and I should be thankful for being adopted. Yeah, that is what's helped me. My art has helped me through this, the anxiety that, and, and the, the, the uncertainty, uh, both before and after my adoption. And my music has helped me. So all those strands that my adoptive family didn't have. In the last 20 years, I've now completed a book. And I've shared that book with both families, adoptive and birth. So it, uh, it, it helped me to, to get the, the feelings out of the head, onto the paper, and to share them. And. Uh, to share them with my children, and they were happy for me. It's a surreal experience, ex being an adoptee, especially a late discovery adoptee, where you live half your life thinking one story, and in fact, it's a lie. And in fact, if you try and, try and find an upside, some shape or form, find it deep inside yourself, then you move on. But that anger is going to hold you back. That anger is not going to let you go. You've got to let go of it. I guess explain to people that there are consequences to adoption. It's not the fairy story that it's made out to be. 
Every day I wake up and I think I know who I am now.